there are some limitations and considerations, and those of you that have done much with uh, linear systems of equations will immediately ask some questions, which I'm going to try to head off by at least explaining what are some of the limitations of, of this whole approach here. And uh, there are two limitations. One is feasibility. It's possible to specify sets of data that don't actually yield a probability distribution when you do a least squares fit. And that's, that's called feasibility. Uh, the other issue is overfitting and underfitting. If you have too many terms, you can overfit the data. If you don't have enough terms, you can underfit the data. So let's talk about each of those in turn. Let's imagine here, and what I'm showing on this slide now is, imagine that you've assessed from an expert, or maybe you actually got these points on the cumulative distribution from an empirical data set that you've got. This could be aircraft repair time. This could be cost of replacement of a particular replacement part. This could be, uh, you know, numbers of aircraft that need to be brought in for service within the next so on. This could be number of flight hours before failure, any of these things. Let's so, so as you have some data off your cumulative distribution that is represented here. 14% um, chance of being less than four, 29% chance of being less than 10, whatever it is. That's a bunch of data points. If we fit this, just take this data, fit it to a four-term metalog, you get a pretty nice representation of those data points. It doesn't go through all of them. Now, if you only had four data points, it would go through all of them. It'll go through all of them exactly. But if you've got six data points or 100, it'll go through them approximately. <laughs> you got a nice Enjoy. probability distribution here. Okay, was there a, did I hear a question or? No, not yet, okay. Um, but what if you, instead of using a four-term metalog, you tried to fit this data with a six-term metalog? Well, what do you got now? Well, you, the good news is you've got a curve that goes through all of those data points exactly. The bad news is it's, is it's not even a probability distribution. The density function doesn't look like a density function at all, and it's, not, it's certainly not something you'd want to use. So feasibility, there is a feasibility requirement, which is that the probability density function, m of y, which is the equation I just gave you, and you don't have to memorize that equation, that's in the paper, that's already built into the software, but this probably is, is greater than zero, the probability density, as you can see here, is greater than zero for all levels of probability, cumulative probability y between zero and one. So generally, this is a condition that has to be checked. Uh, you, you, uh, with three-term metalogs, you have it in closed form, but generally you need to check this. And it's uh, pretty easy to check, but it needs to be done. And uh, there are a lot of ways for dealing with infeasibility, and I'm going to talk about these particularly in session three of this uh, workshop in a couple of weeks. Regularization, we, could, we can do as uh, Isaac Faber and... Uh, and Travis Jeffries have done. You can do a you can do a, a least absolute distance linear program with feasibility constraints, um, and and that would ensure feasibility. It, it's not it's no longer the maximum likelihood solution, but it does, ensure, uh, in, does lead to feasible constants, which is fine. Um, I'm happy. I'm just as happy to to select among feasible least squares fit metalog, and I'll show you how we would do that in a practical sense for real data sets that are feasible for some, uh, set, for some numbers of metalog terms and infeasible for others. So anyway, feasibility is something to keep in mind. Secondly, uh, let's take a look at uh, overfitting. Let's take, this is a, a particular data set that I have used uh, on several occasions as part of my uh, work as a general partner in a real estate fund. Um, and this, simula this, this red dot here was simulating the value of a portfolio of loans. And I, I was satisfied that the simulation had done a pretty good job of representing the range of values of what might have come out of this portfolio of loans. If I tried to fit that with term metal, which is a logistic distribution exactly, you can see that it comes up with what looks like a pretty good fit, but there are also these areas of the distribution in here and in here that it's really not fitting all that well, okay? So suppose instead of using a two-term metalog, suppose I used a five-term metalog. Well, that's interesting. That goes through the data almost exactly. It looks really good, right? And it comes up with a relatively interesting, uh, very fat shape and short tails. 
it turns out that this is an artifact of the way I had done the simulation. But nevertheless, it, this, this fat, short-tailed curve is an extremely good fit uh, relative to the simulation and gives me a visual view of what the data actually looks like. What if I tried to fit that with a 16-turn metalog? Well, it, it still is feasible, but, but look, I've got this wavy trimodal shape here with a 16-turn metalog. And what it's doing, of course, is it's fitting the nuances of this empirical data kind of going, simulated data kind of going up and down a little bit and so forth. And that's why I got these three uh, peaks there. In my view, the five-turn metalog is the better of the three here. And this is ultimately a matter of judgment. You may look at that 16-turn metalog and you say, oh, I know exactly why that's trimodal. It's because of the following characteristics of this data set that I'm analyzing. It has three different segments or some such thing as that. But in this case, um, for this data set, knowing it the way I do, I would say that the 16-term that the is overfit. And that's partly a matter of judgment. We'll also give you some tools for thinking about how to pick the right number of terms, um, which include, you could look at uh, AIC, BIC, there are these various information criteria that, that have been used by various parties, including Harry Markowitz and others. Uh, but my preference is to just look at the curves for lots of different numbers of terms and pretty much you'll get some insight from that one way or the other. And you can probably pretty quickly figure, gee, I think, I, I think this one's probably the best fit for what, um, for what I'm trying to do.